brother, I expect to stay going home to Oklahoma. Yes, I am. All In November 2022, my son and I made another conventional three-day trip, this time to Oklahoma. Planning two weeks ahead, we first checked the weather in the wishful destination, Oklahoma City. After selecting three clear days, the flight tickets were purchased from Delta, as always, followed by an advanced booking of the tent, horse ranch, and all other planned activities except for two museum passes. Details will follow. The three-day schedule was finalized and emailed to our personal driver, whose agreement we reached two weeks prior to our visit. Day one. At the conclusion of a 2 hour and 12 minute flight, we are landing at Will Rogers Airport, Oklahoma City. The name is after an Oklahoma native cowboy, comedian, writer, traveler and political speaker Will Rogers. On our way from the airport to the tents, the first stop was American Banjo Museum. It welcomes walk-ins. Purchasing passes online in advance is not required. The tickets were just $7 for each of us and there were discount options, which you can check on their website, AmericanBanjoMuseum.com, in Plan Your Visit section. Bear in mind that the museum is closed on Mondays. As our selection of the days for this trip was exclusively based on the weather, we had to arrive either on Monday or on Tuesday. We wanted to visit two museums on day one, this one and Mixtape Obscura. Glad that I discovered on time that both museums were not open on the same day. Mixtape is closed on Tuesdays and Banjo is closed on Mondays. Flying here on Wednesday wasn't the perfect option either, as the remaining days of the week had bad weather. So, we had to make a small sacrifice by reducing Tuesday's activities to one museum only and visiting Obscura on Wednesday. The old South. An aging slave teaches his grandson to play the banjo in a scene which is repeated often for generations. Allegedly originated as a sub-Saharan African folk music and brought to America by the plantation slaves, banjo music has become an integral part of American folk music since the 1800s. It was then that banjo was introduced to Ireland as well by the Virginia minstrels, in particular by Joel Walker Sweeney. Soon after, banjo as a genre gave the rise to mountain string bands and co-founded the blues and bluegrass. Lively and upbeat, banjo music does not only consist of a melody, rather it utilizes drawn notes to give the impression that the music is played by more than one instrument. The more complicated pieces of banjo music have multiple drone notes, usually organized in a predictable roll pattern that gives an illusion that the melody is being played very fast. Usually, the banjo music is not amplified as its resonator allows it to be played loud. Notable names in the Ward Sand banjo performance are Eddie Peabody, whom you see here, Bella Fleck, Tony Trishka, Don Reno, James D. Crow, Royce Mack, Earl Scruggs, and Roy Clark. American Banjo Museum, or ABM, is the only established facility in the entire world devoted exclusively to the collection and conservation of banjo instruments, audio tapes, films, 
printed music scores, and all other relevant memorabilia. The ABM is home to over 400 instruments, from primitive handmade strings to the holy grail of contemporary bluegrass. Gracefully installed to celebrate the music and heritage of the American banjo genre, the museum displays dozens of permanent and mobile exhibits covering all periods of banjo evolution, starting from the roots of American slavery. Special exhibits include a collection of rare instruments manufactured by William Busha in the 1840s or classic era of Fairbanks, Cole, Stewart or Gibson that expanded the banjo production to Europe, as well as the largest ever collection of over 300 Jazz Age old banjos, including the ones used for bluegrass music of post-World War II era as inspired by Charlie Poole, Snuffy Jenkins, and Earl Scruggs. A modern-day star is the talented American actor Steve Martin. The museum has a special party room named Your Father's Mustache and a learning lounge with interactive educational videos. Moreover, visitors are encouraged to select a banjo and follow one of the instructional videos. What a treat, right? This is an absolute must-come place. Next, on day one, we had a slight deviation from the protocol. Our driver arrived to the museum a bit late, and we were short in time for catching the 5 p.m. water taxi ride. As the Bricktown taxi runs every hour sharply, the next ride would be at 6 o'clock, which seemed too late, as in November the days are short. I had booked in advance water taxi for the next day, Wednesday, so skipping the ride on Tuesday was an easy affair, and we headed the road to our extraordinary lodging place, the Indian teepees and wagons. Here we are, the Orr family farm that features gorgeous Conestoga wagons and teepees offering a truly unique American West camping and glamping experience right inside the capital, Oklahoma City. I am taking you inside our TP. Follow me. Here, the accommodation is called glamping, as it includes fully furnished teepees and 19th century wagons with dining tables, remotely controlled heating and AC vents, comfortable beds and coats extra radiators microwave, refrigerator, Wi-Fi the only missing things are TV, running water and bathroom Therefore, the camp has a separate area for individual bathrooms with showers, each paired with every TP or wagon. As we lodged in TP number 2, our bathroom was number 2. Here is the quick tour. It's very basic, simple, but clean and comfortable. The camp also has a spa. Here, I have scanned the map for you.
Initially, while choosing the accommodation, I wanted a wagon, and my son wanted a TP. To me, wagon looks really cute on wheels above the ground, which is very important for a cold month like November. But my son preferred the TP for that classic Indian experience, larger space than that of a wagon, painted murals on the exterior, wooden poles supporting the cone to exemplify the traditional nomadic TP design. The exterior and interior of each TP represent a particular tribe's murals. RTP number two, for example, represented Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes. It was a large one set to accommodate five people, so there was an ample space for just two of us. My son took the king size bed and I took the upper cot. The only challenge was the wrong choice of a month. You see, for events and activities, the Orr family farm has two seasons, spring and fall, with the latter ending in mid-November. Yet the accommodation in tents and wagons is throughout the entire year around. Reading on their website that a proper heating was guaranteed, I did not envision that we would face problems in staying in the tent in November. The heating was fine, as promised, but because the teepees are not hermetically cemented on the ground, rather they are fixed by poles and sticks in an Indian way, there were huge openings allowing the cold winds to enter the teepee. We tried to block the gaps with pillows, but still it was a challenge. On the other hand, it was very warm inside the wagons in that cold season. I entered one to check it, yet the interior of the wagon wasn't attractive. It resembled a Civil War era mobile hospital. So my advice is that staying in TP is more fun, but you have to choose the right month. In addition, the camp offers picnic areas for roaring campfire to grill burgers, hot dogs, toast marshmallows and rediscover the magic of the night sky with a breathtaking view of the pond by our side. Actually, the pond was the area where our driver would drop us off or pick us up, as parking inside the camp was prohibited. We came prepared. We even had carried a pack of coal. Soon after entering the TP, the mini refrigerator was loaded with hot dogs, marshmallows, salami, cheese, butter, potatoes, cucumbers, popcorn, fruit, chocolate, all carried from Atlanta, and of course ingredients for the homemade soup that I was planning to make in the microwave. I had press-soaked the lentils at home overnight and marinated lean stew meat with onion see the arrows to the jars. In about 20 minutes, the soup was ready. Aesthetically, it wasn't perfect, I admit, but it was ridiculously tasty. My son enjoyed the warm homemade soup inside the Indian tent. Day 2 In the morning, we headed the Cottonwood Creek Horse Ranch, situated in Oklahoma City, on Chisholm Road. The ranch breeds, grooms, trains, and races Morgan horses. Мы не 
дожить Не успеху мне допеть Не успеть И я о ней напою И я куплет допою Хоть немного еще Постою на краю if you have watched our former video, the Kentucky Castle holds sorobreds from the Arabic stallions and Dutch mares. Here, we were excited to meet Morgan race horses and saddlebreds. The ranch is run by talented and heroic women. Some are rodeos and Morgan judges, nationally recognized trainers, in addition pilots and scuba divers. Some have graduate degrees in equine management. <laughs> so we have stalls all the way around. They're all double sided. So yeah. He's a world champion. He won worlds at the Morgan World Championship this past year. That's Boo. He's also a world champion. <laughs> I think that's Brandy. Brandy's a world champion. She is a Western Pleasure at the Tissue Board. And he's kind of new for us, but she's a figure. We call him Justin. And this one right here, he is a, he's a saddlebred, and he's a world champion, and he's inducted in the Hall of Fame. So he's a big deal. He's got to retire now. <laughs> The horseback training programs are custom tailored for each individual with specific goals in mind. The training instructions include saddle seat, hunt seat, western seat, horse boarding, driving and marketing horses. The training sessions typically last 30 minutes and include horse grooming, spiritual connection and of course indoor and outdoor rides. We had booked two sessions with Maddie, all together just $80. My son and I had a fascinating time. While booking a lesson, check if your preferred trainer is available on your chosen day and hour. Yeah. 
The range also has a memorabilia room with a display of accessories and pictures of championships. Lastly, Cottonwood Creek Ranch sells two types of horses, world-class Morgan race horses and American saddlebred show horses for all disciplines. Many Morgan horses are listed on morganshowcase.com and the saddlebred horses are featured on saddlebredshowcase.net. So check those websites for updates. Basic stallion and Morgan listing costs $75 per horse or $200 per year with unlimited posting and updates. Video editing is an extra $25. Back downtown. This is the optimal time to bestow our driver. A father of four, his large family immigrated and initially resided in the state of Maryland. When one of his daughters got a scholarship to study at the College of Medicine at the University of Oklahoma, the whole family moved to Oklahoma and never regretted it. Soon, his daughter will earn an MD degree and will specialize in cardiosurgery. For his own words, at the beginning of the clinical residency, his daughter will receive a 250000 salary. A true success story. Now, look at the army of crows lined up on the overhead of electric wires. It amazes me why the birds stay safe on the wires, while the bats get killed by electrocution when they hang from the wires. Perhaps it is because of bats larger elongated wingspan that breaches the spacing between the wires and closes the pass so the current flows through the body. Arriving at Mixtape Factory Obscura on 9th Street Northwest. This museum welcomes both walk-ins and online purchases of tickets. It is closed on Tuesdays, remember. The staff is polite and offers various discounts for seniors, teenagers, students or even for EBT card holders. If you opt to ask for a discount, you have to purchase the ticket in person at the box office. Regular admission is $22 per adult plus diffraction glasses each ranging from $0.92 cents to $1.84. Glasses are non-mandatory, but I would recommend them. This is a large space of handcrafted avant-garde art experience. Typically, a self-tour lasts 30 minutes. I did not find, though, that there was a synesthesia experience, as advertised, because synesthesia is a serious neurological condition that manifests in the involuntary pairing of irrelevant senses such as auditory with olfactory or visual with auditory or optical with tactile. I have written a book about this disease in 2014. That is why I am familiar with that condition. Here you will only encounter optical illusionary. But opinions vary, of course. Also, if you come here with kids, don't forget to ask at the admission for a scavenger hunt map so the children will locate hidden objects per self-touring, such as a pizza box. My son is almost 20, so he wasn't interested in I Spy concept, but I asked him to find something for you. Also, look for a keyboard, or a hurt, skull, or ants having a picnic.
Lastly, I will show our purchases from the museum gift shop in souvenir section of this movie. It was time to catch the boat. For Wednesday, I had a 4 p.m. reservation made online weeks ago for the water taxi cruise. When we arrived at the boarding spot, there was nobody meeting us. Turns out that they had cancelled the trip due to a mild wind. The sky was clean with no precipitations at all and we knew it from the beginning when we were choosing the day for our trip to Oklahoma. But even the mild wind was seen as a liability by this business. We learned that breakdown water taxi cancels trips too often for various small or serious reasons so this was a common practice on their part. When the trip is cancelled, the taxi offers credit for another ride in the future and if you don't need another ride, you need to email your reservation number to the company at info at bricktownwatertaxi.com or sales at bricktownwatertaxi.com and ask for a refund and they will issue it almost immediately. So that's what we did. To fill the time gap, we strolled down the neighboring park and bridge in search of a convenient eatery. We stopped by the Bourbon Street Cafe restaurant right at the canal. My son and I ordered six meals, oysters Baden Rouge, alligator or crocodile bites, spinach artichoke dip, spinach mushroom pasta, angry orchard, which basically is a cider and food pairing, as well as coconut shrimps. The bill arrived at the net amount of $115 and with tips we paid $125. I also ordered a small shot of Oklahoma bourbon whiskey from the bar only for me and for extra $8. Minus the cancelled cruise, we had a wonderful day, but the evening was still waiting for more creative activities. At the arrival to our TP, my son took a short nap and I decided to BBQ alone. Look at the Venus. Soon my son will wake up facing another challenge with fiery hot dogs and marshmallows. While booking the stay in the camp, my maternal instinct led me to consider a plan B alternative as it was our first glamping experience in a tent and the month was November. So, for the second night I had concurrently booked two rooms at the Embassy Suites Hotel of Oklahoma City, a non-refundable cost. As the night progressed and we restarted our battle with the winds entering and fox trotting inside the teepee, 
At around midnight, I summoned our driver to drop us at Embassy Suites for the remaining night. From our former video about the Kentucky trip, you must know that Embassy Suites is my number one favorite trademark. So here we are, unpacking to repack shortly after, as in the next morning, we are taking our return flight to Atlanta. For small material memories of our trip, I bought this shirt for my son from the American Banjo Museum's gift store for $21. From Mixtape Obscura gift shop, we bought this blue insulated tumbler for $22 and fancy sunglasses for $10 here. Lastly, as my son is a fan of fancy and expensive soaps, in Will Rogers Airport's gift shop, he chose this activated charcoal soap with goat milk and a bunch of essential oils. Eight dollars here. The flight, oh yeah, it was perfect. I have been on jets since my age of 3 years, and my son has been flying since his age of 2. We have been traversing across many states, and we are used to the fact that domestic flights usually have those annoying bumps and abrupt changes in altitude. But this flight at Lando, Oklahoma City was flawless, the same with the return flight. Next was the city itself. It is a neat, clean place, at least for the parts close to the tourist trails. I'm not going to discuss urban indices to praise this place. I will bring up a fact that matters to a tourist. The number of museums in this city. Oklahoma City has 136 class museums. Let's see. Here are the numbers of museums in certain cities in the Union. We have regrets for not visiting a few more museums in Oklahoma City. We only checked two because of our limited time. As I mentioned in my former videos, we only take three-day domestic trips because our cats do not take our absence well, even with the sitters. I would love to visit Rose Rock Museum in Noble, a town 29 miles away from Oklahoma City, a 35-minute ride. Currently, that museum is closed. Basically, it is a display of oddly formed rocks unique to Oklahoma that naturally grow into the shape of roses. Overall, we had a marvelous time. The rest you will judge for yourselves. Thanks for stopping by.